the the Pentecostal church is transforming. You know, it's it has a lot of people like me who remember like, you know, my my Wella didn't cut her hair, she never wore pants. Um, it's hard to be a feminist and be Pentecostal at the same time because I am a feminist and in our culture, in our church. That's got to be tough. Yeah, no, and in a way it is, but in a way it's not because. I don't know much about Pentecostal. So well, I, they're, they're very, there's a lot of gender. Um, is it conservative? Yes. Okay, so it's like Baptist kind of, um, not maybe not as far to conservative wise. So they're pretty conservative. Because I can tell you all about Baptist church and evangelicals. Why? Why do you well, know I, that? I, okay, I've, I've so they're like evangelical church. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. They are really conservative. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that the church is now kind of understanding. But I think the thing is, like you said, there's a bunch of young people like me who are like, this is my faith. Yeah. Um, and whether or not that equals all my values or not, that may not be a thing for me to say right now. But it's something I feel strongly enough about the faith that I want to attend. Like the service that I go to is in Spanish. So... I would say Jesus hits a little different. He's Jesus in Spanish. <laughs> and for me, like, that's what I say. So faith a lot is your culture, right? right? Um, so. And anyone that criticizes you for saying the word Jesus, it's like you say Jesus, his real name is Yeshua in, in Hebrew or Isa in Arabic. Right. So it's like. We're a little, we, I'm so we, impressed by all this that you know, oh, Neil. No, like, listen, I've read the Bible. I understand it very well. I also, I'm really, I'm really fascinated on different mindsets in different churches yeah and this is this is this is i've just gotten into this like literally just recently so i'm noticing that like so i i, I don't want to sound like a hater but like a lot of evangelicals and, and uh baptists they act like our way is the only way and everyone else is damned except for us yeah and we have the right version of the bible yeah. and only our only our version of the bible is the pure word of god and all the other right. ones are are fake or whatever they want to call it or uh a rip off or yeah demonic sometimes they'll say like whoa you're calling a bible demon that's you, intense you, you, you but you get that though <laughs> like it's it's mostly it's mostly the king james people okay so i'm not not the king james bible is a, is a great bible it's a great version of the bible but the people that there's, there's this like there's this like sect of christianity that literally thinks that the only divine inspiration Bible is the King James Bible. Okay. And that all the other ones are, for some reason, not good enough. Not good. And they'll say things like, oh, they took 2,000 words out of the Bible from the New, New, New International Version. And then you'll, and so a, per, a person like me will say, but what do you, what is your reference? Right. From what? The original? Right. But it's not the original. They're talking about the King James. Yeah. So their 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 uh their reference point is starting at a Bible that was written in 1611. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, uh, Lucifer. The word Lucifer is not in the is not in the NASB. The word Lucifer is not in the original uh, Masoretic text in Hebrew either. I'm literally so impressed by, by you right I, now. Listen, I can like go you are literally a religious scholar right now. In oh my yeah. Eyes. Uh, listen, I probably could teach this stuff, but but listen, the word in the actual Hebrew is halal. Okay. It means morning star or light bringer. Okay. It's, there's two two ways to to define that the word halal it does not mean Lucifer. Okay. So to the actual the actual version that's wrong is the King James Bible. Right. So the same people will say, okay, um, but they'll say, um, they took uh they changed the word Godhead into uh divine or something like that okay and then you go and look at the greek the original greek which is the textus receptus okay that's called the received text that's... i hope everyone is learning something right I know. now because yeah, yeah. i am very impressed i told you once i get going <laughs> yeah I no but like the fact that you know all the name for the taxes <laughs> and everything i'm so impressed yeah oh I'll just, i don't care i've already, I've already said this before I, I was i was in prison you know years ago and that was one of the things that I did that because I read the Bible and I learned it and I learned it and now, and now I'm fascinated by it because now I want to know, you know, where it came from, what, how much of it's historical true, right. how much of it's, you know, es esoteric and what I, I just want, I just have like a, a, a hunger for that stuff. So back to what I'm saying, you'll see the, the King James people will say stuff like, uh, um, they'll say, oh, uh, they took, they took the word Godhead out. And then you'll go on out. Not, most people will say, "Oh, that's crazy!" Oh, yeah, they're you're, and they'll just they'll just eat it up and then follow it, and that's it. And then 
someone like me, I actually go look into the matter, and it's like, okay, the word that's in the Texas Receptus is uh, diotitos, which is div divine. Diotitos, which is divine. Like, okay. it's, 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 it's the correct translation. Yeah. So the point I'm making is people want to nitpick translations. It's such a waste of time. Yeah. It really is. You know what I'm saying? I absolutely. And I think for me, faith is something that should bring people together. And anytime it's used as a thing to keep people apart, I feel like isn't what Jesus would have wanted. Right? That's like, what the Pharisees were doing. I mean. Right? I they're, just. <laughs> they're looking to things to trip them up. Oh, look, it says this right here. Let's see what like, he says. I am, Try to trip him up. I am like the most welcoming Christian just because that's I feel like. Spirit, but that's what I feel like he would that's have what I'm, wanted. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get at. I feel like Christianity is about pr applying the principles that are in the Bible. Right. Not looking at the literal words and being like, yeah, this is what it says. And so right. therefore, uh, like, none of that matters. Well. None of that matters. In practice, I think it doesn't in the sense that if you believe in a divine creator, if you are living your life based on principles that you feel like are aspirational, where you feel like those are reflective of like the Christian faith or any faith, like you're committing to a better self. Yeah. And I think that's what faith is. I think having faith is also saying, I want to aspire to be more like Jesus. And for me, like the Jesus that I know, whether he's Jesus or Jesus, depending on how I think of him that day or, you know, what kind of energy I bring. Um, he was inclusive like he was understanding he was taught to me as someone that did not have judgment you know based on he who what he who has no sin cast the first stone exactly right that's what i'm saying you see all these people with, with signs say god hates fags it's like really so so you you think after reading that verse where you, right like that's they, what you they, got they took, <laughs> like... took, um what's what's the word of the of the girl what's what do they call her uh, adulteress yeah. and they were gonna stone her to death yes they were uh, he he walked up and said, "Whoever has no sin casts the first stone," and they all walked away. Right. So how are you going to tell me that that equates to let's walk around with signs that says God hates fags? You know, and I think that a lot people put a lot of themselves in faith, and sometimes it's not their most positive self. Yeah. So that's why I try really with my work to just be, you know, clear that I think regular everyday Christians struggle, and that's okay to say. Yeah. I don't have to be a perfect person for God to love me. No. I don't have to You're be You're not a, even expected to. Right. I don't have to be a perfect person to share his word or to share the idea that being close to your faith is good. And I think a lot of people succumb to that pressure and then it makes them judge other people because it's easier to be like, oh, well, I'm not perfect, but look at this person. But really, it's you're not perfect and that's okay because God made you like that and he that's, loves you. That's the whole point of the New Testament. It is. I mean, I mean, if you look at the, the the Old Testament, you get you got you got your Ten Commandments, and you got your Mosaic. I laws. don't have a favorite. I'm just yeah, no, no. It's it, and it, it's 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 uh it's very necessary to learn right where the origins are from, which of is course. the Old Testament, which mm -hmm. is the Mosaic, the two hundred and thirty-seven whatever it is laws that he got plus Ten Commandments. Now, the whole point of the New Testament is to say we're flawed. Right. We cannot follow that. It's okay. If we all had, if that was our, if that was the standard, right? We all had to follow all those laws and be perfect human beings. We're all screwed. Yeah. I'm screwed. I've, I would have been done. That's it. I I'm, just want to go to heaven and have the bills win the Super Bowl. Right. Like, I just want to so then here comes, be a decent here, person. Here comes, and this is why I love this book. Even if you don't believe in it, even if you're not, you're not religious, even if you're an atheist, this is why I love this book. It's the greatest book I ever told because he, here comes this Messiah and you're like, what is he going to do? Is he going to, what is he going to do? And he comes and says, just have faith. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Just believe. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? That's it. Absolutely. He doesn't say anything else. Right. And that's why when I decided to start writing, I was so scared because I was like, what do I write about? And even when I was writing about my faith, um, you know, a lot of people know parts of me, but they don't know like the part of me that is really in tune to my faith. So I was nervous, you know? And I asked myself this question, um, how did my faith get there? Like, I have such a strong faith in God. And I was like, how did it get there? Like, is that something that was homegrown? Um, and that was kind of what I wrote about in my column, and it, it became then easy for me. So it's only 400 words. But for me, asking myself that question really laid out a lot.
Yeah.